I, I promise this is the last Boris Johnson video. I promise. Unless he does something monumentally stupid, or at least until we get the committee report. Um, but, hey, it's Boris Johnson. You never really know. <laughs> so we have had, to be honest, a pretty heavy, you know, uh, Boris Johnson week. And, of course, that is pretty understandable. There was always going to be uh, some sort of fallout. But the interesting fallout now really has shown that two, th well, three things have emerged from all of this. First of all, the ERG, it's once heavy heydays of where it could get possibly up to a hundred MPs to revolt, seems to essentially be a group now that has lost all its power and momentum. And with that, Rishi Sunak can now potentially, maybe, even ignore them. Now, of course, it doesn't signal his, um, you know, he can't sort of fully take a breath now and, and think, Phew, they're all done and gone with, oh, far from it. The ERG potentially still could group with other groups, because as we said before, there are other groups in the Tory party that are still ready and willing to cause trouble for Rishi Sunak. So far from can you know, Rishi Sunak be able to sleep peacefully and not have to worry about the ERG, maybe they'll pop up once again as he, you know, sort of rightly sort of worries about them. But no longer will they be able to hold prime ministers to ransom as they did with sort of David Cameron and Theresa May. I think those days are fully gone. Will they be a permanent problem? Yes, that is true. The other thing that we're seeing is that Brexit is ceasing to be this dividing force in politics and that now something new is emerging. The end of the Brexit civil war may be slowly but surely coming to an end. Not only have we had poll after poll showing that people are, well, their decisions on, on Brexit were, were wrong, that they regret Brexit, and that sort of people maybe would quite like another vote, which is again increasing in popularity as, as we've seen from polls. But people now want close relationships with the EU. People are more than willing to accept freedom of movement, which we were told by the Brexiteers they would never, ever accept. That's why they wanted to leave the European Union, amongst the many other myriad reasons. But new polls show people are willing to accept freedom of movement, which basically means, well, that single market membership. <laughs> and if you've got a deal which pretty much leaves one part of the United Kingdom in the single market with Rishi Sunak praising, saying how wonderful being in this position of being in the single market was, making it such a dynamic area to do business in, well then, why now does that not apply to the rest of the UK? And while maybe the big Brexit battles of, of yesteryear Rob, are now consigned very much to the history books, this does not this does sort of signal a, a re-emergence of sort of pro-European politics. And, well, as we've said, eventually rejoining. It's not beyond the realms of possibility. Give it another, what, maybe five years. But as we've said before, we are here at this point a lot quicker than a lot of people did suspect in the past. So maybe rejoining the single market customs union or doing closer alignment deals would be sort of very much in our favour. After all, this new Windsor Agreement does pretty much seal off the Tories' desire to do deregulation in the UK, which, as we said, not only calls into question the Northern Ireland Protocol Bill, but also the retained EU law bill as well, and the powers that that would give Tory MPs to just get rid of EU regulation, or at least retained EU regulation in, in overnight. And, of course the labyrinthian process that other MPs would have to go through in order to try and stop it. And of course, the final big one, that the cult of, of Johnson, and even that of, of Liz Truss, 
is well and truly over. They could only muster 22 people to go to them. There was there was no big clamour to, to sort of save or at least align with Johnson's position on this. And it's yet another sort of, well, at least guaranteed maybe Rishi Sunak yet another, shall we say, more peaceful night in the of sleep in the future. But far from it, shall we say, will his sleep be fully peaceful. Indeed, no, he will still have to deal with a lot of potential rebellions. And of course, as we've talked about before, George Eustace is meant to be sort of in the midst of brewing a big Brexit, well, ish rebellion around the trade deals with Mexico and Canada that are being proposed, saying no parliament must be given a vote on these deals. And though a farmer rebellion down the future is indeed something that Rishi Sunak may indeed have to face. And as we said a couple of weeks ago, could farmers be the ones to finally topple this Tory government, angry at them of the be Brexit betrayal that was put upon them? And of course, a lot of people are very much going to realise that Brexit was the source of a lot of our problems in this. And as we said, eventually, Brexit will be overturned. It's just a matter of time. And I think it's going to happen a lot quicker than I think people think. But interestingly enough, we are now also getting news that Boris Johnson is indeed preparing for the worse. Because as we watched it live, I said, look, that performance he gave did not do him well. And on a recent question time when people were asked to the audience, do you think Boris Johnson told the truth? Not a single person raised their hands. And thus, from what we know now, Boris Johnson is already preparing for his worst case scenario, that he gets this 10 day suspension that would trigger a by-election in his Uxbridge seat, a by-election he would have to indeed fight, that he has said he is more than willing to fight, his, according to his allies, and he's already preparing apparently for that. And this is something that Rishi Sunak would probably not be looking forward to doing because having a by-election now, well, it would not be good for them because it would have the Tories would have to put in uh, money into this. They would have to put in a lot of stuff, because losing a by-election now would be bad. It would be very bad for them, even where they are now. And that means Rishi Sunak would have to go out and support Boris Johnson, <laughs> which, again, would probably not be a good look for Rishi Sunak. But in other news as well, recently, uh, according to a recent poll, if there was a by-election held, Boris Johnson would lose. And I highly suspect he would lose quite significantly, which means the Tories would have to pour, pour a lot of resources into a by-election fight, which they would lose. So, ultimately, the, the ideas of, of sort of maybe Johnson sort of staying and, and sticking around aren't going to happen. That the cult of Johnson is over. The Brexit, the, the the big dividing line in our in our politics is 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 sort of now getting increasingly blurred to a point where it's no longer there. And pro European feelings and at least alignments are starting to emerge and starting to be less and less questioned. It's becoming increasingly clear that we are entering a new age of politics, something that Brexit sort of quickly shook up, and now we are emerging into something new. What we're emerging into, who knows? But it certainly does look, does look a lot more pro-European. So, as always, thank you very much for watching, and of course, we'll see you all next time.